Hey, it's Chef Austin with EverythingKitchens.com. We're your resource for high quality countertop appliances. We've got cutlery and we've got dinnerware. But today we're gonna to be showing you our top three bread makers. So we've got bread makers from Cuisinart, from Zojirushi, and from Breville. And to test these, we did the exact same recipe in all three of these. And we used the exact same setting on all of them as well to get a accurate, almost scientific result. So we're gonna get into it. We're gonna see how our Cuisinart did and learn all about it. First up, we've got the Cuisinart CBK 200. This bread maker is going to be best for those on a budget who want a great loaf of bread. It does have 16 different features that you could use on here. It does not have any customizability though. So there's no options to program your own bread in here. But if you're wanting just a delicious loaf of bread and you want to use their recipes or your own recipe and try to modify it to fit into one of these categories, you can absolutely do that. The Cuisinart does have a three-year warranty as well, so it does have the longest warranty out of all of our bread makers. Uh, and the killer feature about this one, it has its own convection fan in there. So what that's going to do, there's a fan that's going to rotate all of that hot air around the entire loaf of bread. And what that's going to do, that's going to give us some extreme even browning uh, around the outsides and on the top. Uh, and speaking of our bread, this is a two pound loaf. It has a two pound loaf pan right here as a single paddle down here for mixing. And it does also smaller loaves too. So you can choose between one 1.5 and two pound loaves. So that is a nice feature and the recipe book does have recipes for all those different sizes for each recipe that they offer. So uh, Cuisinart is a great option. Um, I do like it. We're going to test out the bread here to see what it looks like on the inside. So. All right, so it looks pretty nice on the inside. We've got lots of very small bubbles around here. There's not too many overly large bubbles. You can kind of see at the top, there is a little bit of space between the crust. It's not the ideal thing you want to see on a loaf of bread, but you know, it's still going to taste pretty good. So we've got our massive slice of bread. You can see it's about as big as my face. So a little bit bigger than your everyday store-bought bread. Let's see if it fits in our toaster. So it's fitting this way, but let's try to toast it all the way down. So this is all the way down, and you can see there's a good inch that is kind of sticking up out of here. So let's push him back up. We'll see if he fits on his side. And that is not going to fit on the side unless you like try to cut off that top half. So not going to fit in your standard toaster, unfortunately, but still going to make a really good sandwich. And if you wanted to cut this down to toast it, you could absolutely do that as well. All right, we're going to look at the Zojirushi bread maker next. Here is Zojirushi's home bakery, Virtuoso. It is a mouthful, but it makes an awesome loaf of bread. So let me tell you a little bit about this guy. Uh, the Zojirushi is very nice. It has a bunch of customizable features. You can actually program up to three of your own recipes into this. The recipe book on this one is the absolute best. It reads like a magazine, has beautiful full color photos, and the recipes in there are really, really nice. It has complete charts of like saying, this is gonna bake for this long, it's gonna do this, it's gonna do this. It's very scientific, I think. It measures everything in grams, and the people over at Zojirushi know how to make a perfect loaf of bread. So the Zojirushi does have a two pound loaf, just like the Cuisinart, but you're gonna notice this one is the more traditional shape. So it's the longer rectangle, and it's going to make a more uniform loaf. And thanks to these two paddles down here. So it actually has two different mixing and kneading paddles compared to the Cuisinart and the Breville's one. So I believe that led to a better looking loaf. Um, so speaking of loafs, let's take a look at this guy. Uh, you're gonna notice it's uh, just, it looks like your store-bought bread loaf just unsliced. So, it does have two very small holes in the bottom. All your bread makers are gonna leave a small hole in there, but that's okay. Um, it looks like it has even browning all the way around it, even on the top here. Uh, and that's thanks to the top heating element on the inside 
of this lid right here. So you can't see it, but inside of here, there's a top heating element and a bottom heating element. So that also kind of sets Zojirushi apart from a crab. So let's take a nice slice of this and look on the inside. Slicey, slicey. Okay, so it looks very nice. There are extremely small air bubbles in here, which is, um, I think is a really, really pristine piece of bread. So this is like the Instagram worthy loaf of bread here. It's got the shape, it's got the right height. Next up, we have the Breville Custom Loaf. Let's check them out. Here we have the Breville Custom Loaf. It's called the Custom Loaf for a reason. It's got incredible capabilities to customize every single setting on this. It has so many different settings, and within those settings, you can change every aspect of it, from knead time to bake time to bake temperature. All of those are completely customizable, so you can get the absolute perfect loaf of bread. So that's great if you're the home chef and you like to tinker with recipes and things like that. Breville's got your back on that one. So many different features with the Breville Custom Loaf. Uh, I think the coolest feature, it has this little door up here. It's called the Fruit and Nut Dispenser. And you would just add in your ingredients that you want mixed into your bread. Like if you're making cinnamon raisin bread, you can uh, toss in some raisins, close this, and it's actually going to automatically dump all the ingredients into your bread and knead it in there so it's evenly distributed. The other bread makers have that function. They don't have the door. You actually have to lift this up toss in your stuff, it's going to beep at you and tell you, hey, it's time to put it in there. So you lose all of your heat, you have to babysit this thing. The Breville is babysit proof. You literally just set all the stuff in here, press your settings, press start, and walk away. It's going to do everything for you. So that's what I really like about the Breville, and they make it really easy to do. The control panel up here is their classic Breville control panel. It's got the, like, kind of the iPod click wheel dial where you uh, move it around and click in to select your settings. It even has a light button. So when you turn this on, it's got the window up here, and you can hold down that light button, and it's actually going to show you your bread. Again, you don't have to open it up to check the progress of your bread. It's got the window, and it's got the light, so you can easily see how it's doing. So Breville has all these cool features. Let's see how the loaf actually turned out, though. So we've got him over here. You can see him. It's a little more rustic shaped compared to our other breads. It's not that pristine, perfect wall of color. It's got a little bit of darkness over here. It's a little bit lighter on top. And you can kind of see it actually had this little bit of a fold in here. Um, the bread pan that's in here, the bread pan that's in here actually has um, a single paddle down in there. So this is a single paddle. So I'm thinking that's why it maybe didn't need as good as it could. The paddle is interesting though because it is a folding paddle. So it actually folds up and down. So what that does when this is done kneading, it's going to fold down and then you're not going to have as large of a hole in the bottom of your bread. So you don't have a hole sticking straight up like you would get in the Cuisinart. Um, it folds down so you have more bread to eat. And you don't have those weird slices when you're slicing into them. So, speaking of slicing into our bread, let's check out the interior. Okay, so let's look in here. So, we've got a couple bigger air bubbles, nothing too crazy in there. You can kind of see a couple big ones right there. But for the majority of it, it's a lot of smaller air bubbles, which is nice. Um, the crust definition on the sides are kind of varying. On this side, it's a bit darker. On this side, it's uh, kind of dark down here. Then it starts to get a bit light up here. And on the bottom, the bottom looks pretty even. Looks like it's got a well-defined crust on the bottom. So let's do the toast test, and we're gonna try to fit him in there. It looks like it's a it's kind of a tight squeeze, so it, it's fitting, but it's it's definitely touching the walls. You kind of got to help push him down too. So that's all the way down. So maybe about half an inch is sticking out of the top, so not as much as Cuisinart. This is still definitely a 
taller loaf of bread. So if your toaster only accommodates normal sized pieces of bread, this one might not be the choice for you, or you might want to invest in a toaster that would accommodate such a large slice. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of all of our breads from each bread maker. All right, so I'm gonna reiterate the test that we did. We did the exact same recipe on all three of these breads. So gram for gram, uh, weight for weight is all the same. And we did the exact same setting on each of the bread makers too. So it was the basic white bread and it was the quick setting because we used the active quick rise yeast. So, and this was also all the same crust color setting. So these were all uh, set at a medium crust. So just to kind of show you visually what a medium crust looks like on each of these. So we'll start over here at the Cuisinart. So you can kind of see it's, it's it is, I think this is a uh, medium that's leaning more on a darker crust. You can kind of see some darker brown on the sides and on the bottom especially. Uh, and then more on the top is probably what I would consider a medium crust. So on the top medium, on the sides, a little more darker. Um, and I'm thinking that's more because of the convection fan that was circulating that hot air all around it. And since these sides were in contact with the metal pan, that's what caused that. And over here, here's on the Breville. Uh, again, medium crust, so medium on the top and kind of, the, kind of in the same boat. Uh, it's got some darker on here as well. And then on the Zojirushi, I think Zojirushi did the best as far as the medium setting. Um, it's the most even out of all of them. You can kind of see that it's the same color throughout. There's a little bit of white right there, which isn't bad. Um, but this is leaning more on what almost I would consider a light color. Um, but if you want a darker crust on this, again, you can change this to darker. And same on these guys. If you want a lighter crust, you can change that setting down to lighter. So I just wanted to uh, explain that to you guys, that this was the exact same recipe, and we did the manufacturer settings for the same uh, program. And one more thing, I'm going to flip all these guys over. Something that you're going to see in all bread makers is a hole in the bottom, and that's where the kneading and mixing paddle was, just to give you a relative size comparison of the holes. Um, this one's Cuisinart. It's going to be pretty far up in there. It had the biggest paddle out of all of them. Uh, this one is Breville's. Breville's uh, looks uh, deep, but it actually has this little flap right here, and that is where its special paddle folded down. So you don't have as big of a hole that doesn't go down into the bread. And then Zojirushi's over here. Uh, it has one right here, and there was one right here. So it actually has two, since it has two paddles. Their paddles are very, very short, um, so it's not very big of a hole. Um, Interesting thing, on Zojirushi's, there's a little bit of a divot um, on here. There's going to be two divots on each side of this bread, and that's just from the shape of the bread pan. So we'll flip all these guys back over. I'm going to taste each of these guys and just kind of give you my thoughts on how they did. So Cuisinart's over here. Very, very thick crust. It's got a very, very well-defined crust, and that's because of that convection oven. Very chewy crust. So if you like that big chew in your bread um, on the crust, uh, Cuisinart's got that down. The insides, um, it was nice. It was, it was a bit airy because those air bubbles are so large, not as dense. Um, so kind of a mix, mixed emotions here. So we got really, really tough here, and then really, really airy in here. So let's try our Breville bread. So Breville's bread, the crust was a bit lighter than Cuisinart's, so it tasted more like a traditional crust. Cuisinart's almost tasted a little burnt compared to the Breville's. The interior of the Breville, I feel like, is much nicer than the interior of the Cuisinart. It's a bit more spongy. It's got a little more, if you poke it down, it kind of springs back a little faster versus Cuisinart's kind of almost a little drier. So I feel like uh, Breville's is a little bit moister on the inside here. So let's try out Zoshirushi's bread.
So three little bear story. This one, too crusty. This one, kind of in, in the middle. This one, just right. Uh, Zojirushi's crust is very light. It tasted more like your store-bought bread, which I like. It wasn't burnt tasting. It wasn't like too strange. The interior, extremely light and fluffy. It's almost a cake-like texture. I really like that in a white bread. This would make a perfect grilled cheese, a perfect sandwich. Um, and the shape of it too. The Zojirushi shape of this bread is just I think the ideal shape of bread. Um, if you're wanting more rustic loaf, I'd probably recommend the Brevels. This is the more kind of country-esque loaf of bread. You get kind of the, the funnier shapes with this one, and I don't know if that's intentional or not. Um, and then Cuisinart, if you're on a budget, this bread still tastes good. I mean, I would not turn this piece of bread down if it was offered to me. It tastes great. Um, it's definitely just a little bit drier. I uh, got those bigger air bubbles in there, and I think that's just because of the convection fan. So the convection fan is a double-edged sword. It can uh, make the bread, it can raise it really well, it can cook it very well, but sometimes it can overcook it a little bit. So out of all three of these, I'm going to have to say my top pick is going to have to be Zojirushi's, just because it has that traditional loaf shape. It had very even browning all the way around the entire loaf of bread and the interior of the bread was just perfect. What I think of when I think of like a Pullman loaf, this is the ideal perfect texture on the inside. Guys, if you have any questions on any of these bread makers, whether it's from the Cuisinart, the Breville, or the Zojirushi, you can leave us a comment below and we'll get that answered for you. And we also have a link in the description for a review for each of these guys and a full comparison article. We've got more pictures and more in-depth uh, info from these. So if you guys like this video, be sure to press that like button. Be sure to subscribe to Everything Kitchens. And you can check out our website, everythingkitchens.com, where we have each of these guys for sale. And you can be making bread in your kitchen in no time. See you the next time.